when I first made the garden at Perch Hill, I hardly put any roses in at all. And that's because I was really worried about the whole problem of fungal diseases on them, black spot and mildew, and I just wasn't prepared to spray. So I, I just avoided them. But um, since our head gardener, Josie Lewis, arrived, she really encouraged me to try lots of roses and to find which are the best disease resistance, particularly underplanted with salvias, which is what we do here, which helps keep them relatively more disease free. And so over the years, I've built up some real favorites and I just want to talk you through which they are and why, just briefly. Um, I always start uh, with the rich and brilliant palette because for me, that's my sort of heart territory. Those are the sort of colors that I just feel physically drawn to. And um, the roses in that palette that I'm really incredibly devoted to are Tuscany Superb, it's it's hard to beat. It is sadly only flowers once, but it does so for a long time, so it's still worth it. Fantastic scent, wonderful velvety texture, beautiful golden anthers, it, it, and it's quite healthy. So for me, it's um, it's kind of one of the first ones that I put into the garden here. And then Rose de Reche is another one that just um, it, it, it isn't prolific flowering, but it flowers for ages. Um, and it's a very old rose actually, beautiful scent, little small flowers and really compact. So it's ideal for a small garden rose de It's It's really fantastic, even if you have very little space. And then for a climber in this rich palette, I love Guiné, which is this one here. Wonderful scent, wonderful rich texture, lovely climbing up particularly the brick wall here, I, I adore it. And then two that if you'd shown me a few years ago, I'm not sure I would have loved quite so much, but now they're definitely in my top 10 roses. This one's called Hot Chocolate and it's out of petals, a chocolatey, but it's this really strange, extraordinary kind of coppery colouring, exceptionally long flowering, really flowers forever and ever and has a good scent. And then this one, which is the longest flowering rose in the garden here of all, which is Cinco de Mayo. And I actually love its flowers as they go over. They go this sort of slightly mauvey, weird colour, but I love it. And um, it flowers from May until November or even December when we're pruning it back. So that's my first uh, absolutely sort of heart um, rose collection in a way. Then the next palette, uh, which for me is, is sort of my next favourite, is what I call the soft and warm palette of roses. And these are what I think of as cashmere jersey roses. These are comforting, they're lovely, they're sort of like a warm bath. They're, they're just sort of not challenging, but just beautiful. And uh, definitely tip top in that lot is Rosa Mutabilis, which means changing. Um, and it has these beautiful crimson flowers um, with apricot on the same plant. And then fabulously perfumed is La Belle Epoque. And um, it's, it's got the most incredible fragrance. It's got these apricot flowers with the red petal reverse and, a, and, and just the, the scent in the corner where that is. It, it, it's just swoon worthy. It's amazing. And it flowers until November. Um, and then quite an unusual rose in a way, it, it, but very trendy at the moment, is this one called the Julia's Rose, which is the colour of very milky coffee, like a latte. And that's very spiny, but it's also very good for picking. That's the only downside to it, but I love it. And, um, and then another superbly long flowering one is this called the Simple Life. And it just looks like the simple life. It looks like a dog rose, um, but it flowers for ages. So those are my warm contingent. And then in the cooler palette, so basically the whites or the mauvey blues, my two favourites by far are a little white pet. This again, unbelievably long flowering. I mean, I've picked these for a bridal bouquet in November. They're, they're just amazing. And they are covered in flower from May all the way through until November. 
And the rose behind me that we have all the way around the lawn here is one of the rugosas, so super healthy, super long flowering, makes good hips if you don't deadhead it. If you deadhead it, it keeps flowering longer, obviously. And that's called Blanche Double de Cuber. Uh, so it's a French variety, super healthy foliage. So you can almost grow that like a hedge like we have here. I cannot not mention these two large roses, um, which I grow really more for their foliage and their hips than perhaps for their flowers. Uh, this one is a Rosa Moisei geranium, which has lovely sort of pinkish corally uh, flowers, but then these bright orange cask shaped hips all the way through the autumn and this lovely healthy foliage. And finally, one I use a lot for picking, which is Rosa rubrifolia glauca or glauca, or uh, sometimes it's Rosa glauca rubrifolia, sometimes the other way around. And this also has beautiful hips and the contrast between, again, the corally hips and the silvery foliage is what makes it a winner rather than it's very pretty, but simple single dog rose flowers. So these would be my current desert island roses, but it changes every day.